Hello everyone, DM Gashbat here, back again with another game of Zombicide Black Plague. The last game that I played for the channel, I said this was the last of the four character medium missions. After that game, I'd have to either go and paint new characters so I could do the six character missions, or go on to the hard difficulty. Well, guess what? Someone at CMON must have been listening to me because that very same week they released on their website a brand new quest that's four player medium. The very elegantly titled The Rescue of the Incredibly Ancient and Legendary Weapon. So now I know I have a direct line to the people at CMON. There's no other explanation for it. Let's see, what else can I ask for? Make more expansions for Marvel Zombies. I need to have a Zombie Mole Man model. So I assume now they're working on that. We can get on to our game. As always, we're following the exploits of the Plogsburg Petitioners. Four heroes whose job it is is to run at the vanguard of the zombie apocalypse, Notifying communities in town halls and public hearings. True heroes of medieval bureaucracy. We've got Nelly, Samson, Silas, and Baldrick. Using Warhammer model stand-ins for these guys, as well as for all the zombies. The quest today, while telling the local townspeople about the threat the zombies pose, they let us know that they could really use this really incredibly ancient and legendary weapon to help defend themselves. It's in this necromancer's lair, so we volunteer to go get it. It's this nice three-tile map, shouldn't be that long. It's kind of this one big building with an open courtyard. The legendary weapon is stashed right in the middle of it. The vault doesn't hold any legendary weapons. That's actually our exit point. You see the vault entrance in the lower left. We've got five objectives on the board. Shuffled in there is the blue and green objective. Once we get the blue objective, we can open the blue door. Once we get the green objective, we can open up the green door. Every objective gives five XP to the survivor that takes it. The Vault Weapon is just a random one from the base starter set, that's all we're using for now. So it's either the Orcish Crossbow or Inferno. We've got three spawn zones, three red spawn zones. And they operate a little bit differently in this quest. They're only going to be active when I've got at least one survivor on that same board tile. Not zone, I mean the big tile, the actual map section. The green spawn zone at the back of the courtyard, that's going to become active when I open up the green door. And it's going to stay active no matter who's on the tile. A walker, a runner, and a brute are all hanging out in the vault, which is the place we need to get to at the end. And doors can be opened automatically. And I think that's it for special rules. We're ready to start. We're starting in the far left in a tiny little zone with a door in front of us. I'm going to start, as I often do, with Nelly. And she's going to kick open that door. And she does it automatically because of the special rules thin door. This opens up a pretty big building. There are going to be six rooms that we're going to have to spawn for. As always, I'm going to start with the furthest rooms and move inward. So for the room at the top right, I'm going to get a double spawn. So we're going to go back down to the room at the bottom right, and we get one runner and another double spawn. So we're going to hop back up to the top in the next room down the line. We're going to get nothing in sight and one walker. So far, not too bad for all the double spawns that we've gotten. Go back again to the bottom and we get an extra activation for all fatties. No fatties on the board and we're in the blue zone anyway, so it doesn't matter. Go back up to the top left, that little room with the spawn zone in it. We get nothing in sight. And the room right in front of us, we get a single fatty. So Nelly is just armed with a short sword and I don't really want to stop her activation right now. So now she's going to trade with Samson, who is the guy I gave the hammer to. So she's going to give Samson the short sword. She's going to take the hammer. She's going to use her free move action to go into that zone with the fatty. She's got one action left. She takes a swing with the hammer and she kills the fatty with a six. Nice job, Nelly. Here's an experience point for you. I'm going to activate Silas next. His job is to go kill that runner in the bottom right. He's going to spend two move actions to go into the room right in front of there, and he's going to use his short bow. He's equipped with a short bow and a short sword. Takes a shot. going to hit on a 2+, plus for Silas, because he gets that plus one to hit with ranged attacks. Has no problem plugging that guy between the eyes. Baldrick is up next. He's equipped with Monoblast and a short sword. Takes one action to move into that long room right in front of him. And then he's going to use his free magic action to go and blast the room in the top right with that one walker in it. Needs a 4+, plus, gets it, kills a walker, gets an XP, and he moves into that room. Goes ahead and grabs that objective, which turns out to be a red objective, so it just gives him 5 XP. Finally, we've got Samson. We've cleaned up all the bad guys. He's going to move two zones into the same zone as Silas, and he's going to pick up that objective down there. Finds the green objective. Perfect. The green objective is the one that we need to open the door to the courtyard and get the vault weapon. So it's zombie turn. No zombies on the board, so we go straight to the spawning phase. We're all still on that first tile, so the only spawn zone that's active is the one on the top left, and we get a single fatty up there. So a plague bear just kind of pops into an existence up there. 
So because I got the green objective, I don't think I need to spread my guys out to get these objectives as I go. I think it's better to get everyone together and move through as one group. And I think it's better for me to go through the top section because then I don't have to sneak past that spawn zone in the lower middle. So we're going to start with Nelly. She's going to take two move actions. She's going to move into that long room in the middle tile right in front of that red door. I'm not going to open the door. I want to have enough actions to deal with whatever shows up there. She's just going to search and she finds Monoblast. Baldrick's up next. He moves into the same zone that Nelly's in. He searches. He finds Invisibility. That's okay, but I think I really want Nelly's Monoblast. I want a dual wield Monoblasts. So I activate a trade action with Nelly. I'm going to give her my short sword, let her dual wield short swords, and I'm going to take the Monoblast. Samson and Silas both use their activations to just move three zones to join up with everybody, and we're ready for the zombie phase. Fatty moves up, and we're ready for the spawn phase. The only spawn zone that's active is that one in the middle tile, and we immediately get another double spawn. So, drawing two cards on that same spawn zone, because that's the only one that there is, we get a Necromancer and another double spawn. So the Necromancer, of course, comes with a spawn of his own. We get one walker for him, and then for the double spawn, we get three walkers and another walker. That has a lot of cards to go through for one spawn zone. But thankfully, we don't have to worry about that right now, although that is a little bit of a problem, that Necromancer being there. I was hoping to just ignore anything that spawned there while I loop around the other direction because that red door to the right of that spawn zone is closed and they can't go that way. But that Necromancer doesn't have far to go before he gets into that spawn zone in the upper left. I'd kind of like to kill him before he gets there. So we're going to start with Nelly again. Nelly's going to open that door to the right because we do kind of need to move forward as well. That's going to open up five rooms to spawn for. In the furthest back room, we get two walkers. The next one up gets us one runner. The next room in the line gives us a double spawn. So over to the next room and we get a Necromancer again. That's actually not so bad. The Necromancer moves forward one zone. That might make picking him off a little bit easier. We also get two walkers for the other part of that double spawn. The room in the top right with the spawn zone gives us one fatty. And for the room right in front of us, we get a runner activation. But of course, we're still in the blue experience level. So the runners actually don't get another activation, which is fine. I don't really love the idea about having Nelly sprint forward into that room with the fatty, mostly because there is a spawn zone right there. So I'm just going to take my free move action and move forward one zone, search there. I find leather armor, which is okay. Baldrick activates next. He's no more interested in running into that spawn zone room than Nelly is. He searches the room that he's in. He finds some water. He moves forward one zone. Can't hurt the fatty in the next room, so I don't bother casting any magic. I do activate a trade action with Nelly so that she can bring up her hammer again. Silas is up next. He's pretty much just going to chill where he is. I'm going to try and have Nelly and Baldrick keep moving forward, and I'm going to have Samson and Silas there to ambush the Necromancer when he comes by. So Silas just searches and finds a short sword, and he gives that to Samson. So now Samson's dual wielding short swords. Samson himself goes and searches, and he finds a torch. He goes and hands that to Silas. So all the zombies creep towards my guys and we go on to the spawn phase. We've got two spawn zones in the middle. They give us two walkers and an abomination. The abomination is scary. I don't have any way to deal with it. But because we're all running around in a big circle, it might not actually be that bad. I'll just loop around clockwise, go into the courtyard, grab the vault weapon, and keep going that direction. So hopefully by the time we get back to the start, the abomination will be way out of position and it'll be all right. But for right now, it's the hero turn, and we're going to start with Nelly again, because that's just what we do. Nelly has a little bit of a problem in that she's got one of those fatties in her zone. She does have a hammer, though. She goes and takes a strike at him, misses, but hits him with her next shot and kills him. That puts her in the yellow experience level, but it's going to happen eventually. Uses a free move action to move back to the zone with Silas and Samson. She searches in there, and she finds a longbow, which is kind of cool. She activates a trade with Samson. There's a fatty to the other side there on the left. We need Samson to go deal with him. He's going to get the leather armor and the hammer and, uh, sure, the longbow as well. She'll take those two short swords in exchange. Going to activate Samson and his new hammer next. He's going to move off to the left. He misses the fatty, but then he kills the fatty, so he's done his job. That clears the way for Silas. Moves into the zone with Samson. Now he's got a shot at that necromancer. Shoots him down with his short bow gets himself an XP, and he goes and removes that Necromancer spawn in the middle tile. Then I'm going to take a little bit of a chance, and I'm going to search for my next action. 
If I get an awe, I can always have Baldrick rush in and try and kill off the zombie that spawns there. Anyway, Silas has a torch, so I get to draw two cards. I find a hand crossbow and another hammer. Finally, we're going to activate Baldrick and his two mana blasts. He's going to fire into the room in the top right, and he kills off a walker. That puts him in the yellow experience level. Fantastic. Going to go ahead and blast again. Why not? The first one was a free action. Kills off the second walker. I've got three actions left, but I don't really want to get too far ahead of my party, and I don't want to stand in that spawn zone. But what I can do is I can hop forward into that top right room, shoot into the next room down the line in the lower right, that kills off the runner there, and I use my last action to move back to the left and off of that room with a spawn zone. That means not only am I not standing on that zone, but that spawn zone won't activate at all because no one's on that tile. Unfortunately, my party did split up a little bit, so I've got people on the first two tiles. First of all, though, the zombies are going to keep shuffling towards us. We're in the yellow now, so that top left spawn zone gives us one fatty, and then we go to the middle one. We get another necromancer. I thought this was a necromancer layer singular. Apparently it's plural. And they were all having a little conference off to the south. The spawn card that he comes with is a walker activation. So all the walkers on the board get a little extra speed. And that's a little bit of a problem. I don't think I can get to this necromancer past the abomination in order to stop him from getting to the next spawn zone. And since I'm trying to loop clockwise around this whole thing, I'm going to have to try and hot foot it past two active spawn zones in the bottom middle. That might be a little challenging. But that's a future problem. We have more immediate concerns. First off, the zone with Silas and Samson. We've got five walkers in that zone right now. Samson's going to start us off. We're going to activate a trade with Silas. I want that other hammer. I'm also going to take the short bow, give him the long bow. That seems to make more sense. So right now, Samson is dual wielding hammers, which is awesome. And Silas is equipped with a hand crossbow and the long bow. So now Samson has to go to work with these hammers and attack those zombies. He misses twice. Two attack actions, two dice each, not a single four plus. That's not great, Samson, you dumb dwarf. So Silas is poorly equipped to deal with a bunch of zombies in the zone. But he is a pretty good shot with these ranged weapons, so I'm going to go ahead and take a chance on this. I'm going to go ahead and shoot with my missile weapons. I hit on two pluses, which is good, but if I miss, then Samson's going to take a hit. However, he does have the leather armor with his ironhide skill, so he could save it. Anyway, I'm going to start with the hand crossbow. Two shots, two pluses to hit, kill off two zombies. Great start. Have to use my second action to reload the hand crossbow, take a shot for my final action, kill off two more zombies. Couldn't have asked for anything more than that. Baldrick's up next, he skips past that active spawn zone in the top right, gets into that long room in the bottom right, looks into the next room over, sees a bunch of zombies, blazes away with dual mana blast, first free action completely misses. Second one kills off one walker, the next one kills off the other walker, they're all gone, can't complain. Nellie's up next, I wanted her to go follow Baldrick and help him out, but the boys to the left need her help. Free move over to their zone, her two short swords kill off that last walker that they're dealing with. She then activates a trade with Samson, I believe, takes the short bow. I'm going to try and kill off some zombies for range. Fires into that next room to the left, kills a single walker, and then misses with her final shot. So the party is really separated. There's a necromancer on the board. There's an abomination on the board. This isn't exactly how I wanted things to go, but so what else is new? Zombies continue to stamp towards us. One of them enters the room with Silas, Samson, and Nelly. Baldrick's doing pretty well. There are no bad guys around him. Over to the spawn phase. The top left gives us a single runner. The top right gives us two walkers to keep Baldrick company. And the Necromancer spawn zone is always active even if our guys aren't on that same tile. And we get one runner down there. We're going to start with Samson because he has to redeem himself a little bit. Strikes with his two hammers. Sure, he missed completely the last two actions. But surely he's going to succeed this time. Ah, actually, he does. Kills that final walker in our zone. That also bumps him up to the yellow experience level. He moves two zones to the right because there's a lot of bad guys coming after us. And instead of moving that final space onto that spawn zone, he's going to go ahead and search and he finds, ah, so a zombie spawns in his zone. Nice job, Samson. Silas is up next. He moves one zone to the right, takes out his longbow, shoots the walker in Samson's zone. Doing pretty good shooting over Samson's head. That puts him in the yellow experience level. Nice. Moves to Samson's zone, takes out the hand crossbow, and guns down the two walkers in the top right. Baldrick is up next. I'm going to send him to go get that vault weapon. He opens up the green door. I forgot to mention this, but when I open up that door, I am supposed to spawn from that 
well, it's supposed to be a green spawn zone. I accidentally put the blue one down, but I'm supposed to spawn in that courtyard spawn zone right away. That gives us three walkers, no big deal. Baldrick uses his last three actions to sprint towards the vault weapon. Nelly moves four zones to get to the bottom right, and we're back to the zombies. All the zombies creep forward and we go into the spawn phase. The top right gives us two walkers. The bottom middle gives us two runners. The necromancer spawn zone gives us four walkers. And the courtyard spawn zone gives us a necromancer. The necromancer gets another activation. He moves into the zone with the spawn point in the top left. That means next round, there's nothing I can do to stop him, I don't think. He's going to leave the board and that necromancer spawn zone in the middle is going to become permanent. Back to the heroes. Baldrick moves forward one zone and takes an action to grab the vault weapon. I am, of course, hoping that it's going to be the Inferno spell, but it is not. It's the Orcish crossbow. While I don't really want to deal with these walkers immediately to my left, I do have a free magic action, so I go and double mana blast that zone, but I completely miss. Oh well, didn't hurt to try. I've got two more actions, I just run the other direction. Over to Nelly. Nelly still has the short bow. She shoots a walker in the top right. Second action does the exact same thing, so clears that zone. That went a little bit easier than I expected, so she's got some time to kill. She goes ahead and searches in that room, finds a crossbow. That's cool. She then moves off to the left and takes the red objective there. Silas moves three zones to join her and searches as well, finding the lightning bolt spell, which doesn't particularly help. And Samson moves four zones to get a little further ahead of him. Nothing bad coming from that direction until we open up that door. So zombie turn, and sure enough, the necromancer leaves the board in the top left. Finally got one of those guys to escape. The rest of the zombies can't do anything but circle around trying to get to us. The good news is that we're only on one tile section right now, so the only regular spawn zone is the one in the top right. That gives us two fatties. Also, when a necromancer leaves the board, his spawn zone becomes a normal spawn zone. I read through the rules on this, I think that's how it works, meaning it follows the normal rules for spawn zones, meaning that it's not going to activate if I'm not on that same tile section. Letter of the rules, I'm pretty confident with that interpretation. But we still do need to spawn in the courtyard, and we get another necromancer. The card that he shows up with is the abomination card, so the abomination puts on a little extra speed. That necromancer is a problem. Again, I don't really want to go back, backtrack, and try and kill him off. The big problem is, is that now there are six spawn tokens on the board. They're not all active, but that doesn't actually matter. If a necromancer leaves the board while there are six spawn tokens, we immediately lose. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and run as fast as I can to the exit and get there before the necromancer gets to the top right. I should be able to do it, but I can never guarantee how many Necromancer activations he's going to get. So this mission was looking kind of easy for a while, but now we're in a race against time. So we're going to start with Baldrick. Baldrick just has to move, goes four squares to get with the rest of the party. Samson activates next. He moves to the left one zone, takes the blue objective. I knew it was the blue objective, it's the only objective left on the board. He opens the doors, so and now all the zombies are going to come the other way to try and get us. And I don't want to move on to those two spawn points, so I go ahead and search, find chainmail. Now we got a heavily armed dwarf. Nelly's up next. She moves three zones to the left, ending in that double spawn point zone. She's got a crossbow in her hand, so she goes and fires into the next zone on to the left, kills off two of the walkers there, and then she goes ahead and moves back to the right to join Samson. Silas is going to do some equipment trading. He moves up one, takes the Orcish crossbow from Baldrick and gives him a short sword and the lightning bolt spell, moves again, and then he takes the crossbow from Nelly and gives her the longbow. Silas is double wielding crossbows. There's a dangerous elf. Back to the bad guys and they start doubling back. The two spawn zones right in front of us give us four walkers and two walkers. That's a lot of dead guys. Not what I wanted to see. And speaking of what I didn't want to see, I've got two spawn zones in the courtyard. That gives us two fatties and a necromancer. I do not need that necromancer to be getting extra movement. Over to the heroes again, and I need to clear a path. I've got seven walkers and two runners in front of me, and I need to get to the left before that necromancer gets to the top right. I'm going to start with Silas. Shoots first with the orcish crossbow. He hits on two pluses with that, although it does need to reload. Two shots, I kill off two walkers. I'm then going to switch to the regular crossbow. Only hit on three plus, but I don't need to reload. I don't roll great. Three more shots, I kill off a walker with each shot. 
five down, but I'm still on the wrong side of that mess. I'm gonna activate Baldric and his two mana blasts now. He moves forward one square, takes his free magical action, kills off one walker. Second regular action does a little bit better, kills off a walker and a runner. His final action, he kills off the runner. So we've cleared a zone, but I've got two guys that aren't going to be moving any further this round. Nellie's up. She's going to use a trade action with Samson. She's going to give him the longbow, but take the leather armor. He's got chainmail. It doesn't need it. And then she's going to move two zones to the left. Samson dashes past the spawn zones using two actions, and then he takes that longbow and he kills the runner in the next zone to the left. And I know I've got a fatty coming around, so I'm going to use my last action to re-equip the double hammers. Zombie turn and zombies move. Top left spawns a single runner. The middle gives me one runner and a walker activation, so all the walkers come a little bit closer. First spawn zone in the courtyard gives us a double spawn. So same old, same old, the next one gives us two fatties and two walkers. That could have been worse. No extra activation for the Necromancer, and we didn't actually accumulate a whole lot of bad guys. Silas is going to go first. He's going to kill that runner in the middle with the Orcish crossbow. He's then going to move to the left two zones and kill the single fatty in that zone with the regular crossbow. They all do two damage. I can just about see that vault door. Baldrick is going up next. He uses his free magic action to turn behind him and blast the single runner coming up from that direction. Don't need him on my tail. He's then going to spend three actions to move all the way to that long room off to the left. And then his last action, he's going to shoot some more magical bolts into that spawn zone in the top left and kill off the runner there. Uh, it's starting to work out. We're all past that double spawn point. Samson's next. He moves forward one zone and opens up the blue door. That room spawns with a single fatty. Perfect. Samson's got the double hammers. Moves into that room and smashes the plague bearer's head in. Nellie's up next. She could move forward, open up the vault door, but there's a lot of bad guys in there. I think it's better to hold off a turn. She moves to the left one zone. She's now in the long room with Baldrick. She gives him the armor. He's in the most dangerous spot. I kind of hate to leave him alone, but I want to get as close to this door as possible to do something about all those bad guys in there. So then she joins Samson in the room with the vault door and just chills. End of the round and time for the zombie shuffle. I think I might be okay so long as this spawn phase isn't too crazy. The only normal spawn zone that's active is the top left, and that gives me three walkers. We then go to the courtyard spawn zones. We immediately draw a double spawn. That really doesn't make any difference. The net result is the same. We go over to the next spawn point in the courtyard, draw two cards. We get another double spawn, which is not helpful, and a single fatty. So now we have to go back to the top left. Back to the original spawn point, and we got to draw two spawn cards for that. For that, ready for this? We draw a double spawn and another double spawn. Ah, uh, this is driving me crazy. We're back over to the courtyard and we have to draw four spawn cards for that again. In an area that I've already spawned for twice. Three times, technically. Okay, there we get two fatties, a necromancer, which I absolutely did not need, a double spawn again, so we're going to go back to the first spawn point for another round, and finally in the courtyard we get two more walkers. This spawn phase will not end. Back to the top left for the third time in this round. I'm really starting to get nervous about what might show up in these spawns, but finally it comes to a conclusion with four more walkers and one more runner. That was really making me sweat. Zombicide Black Plague is the only game that I have that has these double spawn cards, and I think that's for a reason. Over to the heroes, Samson opens the vault door and moves inside. He's got two more actions, so four attacks with those hammers. Manages to kill off a walker and a fatty. That leaves one more runner. Silas is going to move three zones and kill him off. No danger to Samson on this one because Silas can just swing with the orcish crossbow. That's it. We've cleared everybody out, but we can't leave. You need to leave at the end of the turn, and Samson couldn't have done that because there's still a zombie in the zone. So Nelly and Baldrick just use their activations to move in and hunker down. We have to survive another spawn round. So we go on to the zombie turn. The zombies chase after us. There's a couple of things that are making me kind of nervous. We've got runners up there. If they get another activation, they're going to jump into the vault and get an attack on me. We, of course, have the necromancer. After his move, he's just two activations away from leaving the board. The good news is that there's only two spawn zones activated now. 
I'm technically not on any of the three tiles, so all the normal spawn zones won't be producing any monsters. So we just go into the courtyard. First card comes up, two fatties. No problem. Perfect. Second one comes up, extra walker activation. So this big horde of walkers storms up to the vault door room, but they're just a little bit too late. We're back to the hero turn. We seal up that vault door behind us and we all leave. That game felt kind of close. I didn't take any damage, but I was really sweating the loss condition with all those necromancer zones. But the Plogsburg petitioners did pretty well, didn't lose any guys. It's going to be the same team for next time. And now we don't have a choice. We're going to have to paint a new hero or move on to the hard difficulty. I'm not particularly worried about the hard difficulty. I don't have a problem doing those, but I do want to do these missions more or less in order. I want to go through the easy ones, then the medium ones, and then the hard ones. And I would like to get to the basic scenarios in the main book. But don't get me wrong. Simon can absolutely go and produce as many bonus missions as they like on their website. I've been enjoying them. And I hope you've enjoyed this. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, observations, or concerns, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.